Hi, good evening and welcome to the second Booth Brothers show. Uh, good evening. Thank you for joining us uh, wherever you are around the world. It's very early here in the UK, 1 a.m., but I wouldn't miss it for the world. Let's hope you won't either. We have another fun-filled feature field show this week for you, and I'll tell you what, we have a guest. Well, we have one of the, well, the best in the world, the trick shot genius, that is Florian Venom Collar, and he will be joining us uh, very, very shortly. I just want to say a quick apology for last week if you joined us. Yes, we did lose the last bit of the show, but I just want to say Joey Ryan has been working so very hard this week. We've got all new software. We've got new techno stuff. We, we can go on every single platform you can imagine we are going to be on every single platform we're going to take over the world of paul aren't we joey ryan good evening joey new software I think he's so far out in the country. We're lucky he's got electric, let alone anything else. I didn't know there was any phone masks out where he is. He's somewhere near Texas, isn't he? Oh, we got some great stuff. We are going to be talking, of course, Matchroom Champions League, Paul, and what a couple of days it's been. And, uh, well, we're going to bring you up to date with all of the chat and gossip from that. As I said earlier, we've got Venom, who we're going to bring on. And uh, if you've got any questions for uh, Florian, please don't hesitate to get involved in the chat. As you can see, it's up on the screen there. So be careful what you say, because it's going to be seen by everybody who's logged on so just be careful what you say now then we've got we're doing a new thing where we're going to visit a different pole hall around the world every single week and this week it's the turn of piazza's sports bar in aurora and colorado so we're going to be going over to the owners of that patrick and tony uh, a little bit later on in the show and uh, we've got a new thing for you. We've got the lock picker. We'll explain a little bit more about that later on. And, uh, well, man of the moment, Chris Melling. We've got some Melling magic for you. There's all the other stuff as well, of course. We've got our top 10. And who saw my post of Fedor Gorst with his hand in rather a peculiar position? Uh, we, you know, we've had a few. Uh, Cap, there it is up on the screen now. <laughs> How embarrassing was that for Fedor? Sorry about that, mate, but we had to do it. And uh, you're, you've been sending in your captions for that, and there's some crackers, I tell you. <laughs> you really, really did get your thinking caps on. And uh, we, unfortunately, I don't think we can read all of them out, Joey, because some of them were a little bit near the mark, shall we say. Uh, there is going to be all your questions, of course. If you've got any questions for Venom, as I said, please, please, uh, type them in and uh, we'll read them out. And also, hopefully, we are going to be speaking to the newly crowned APA champion, Jason Shearman. He's actually on his way home tonight, but he's hoping to get back in time to have a quick chat with us at the end of the show. So, um, well, there you go. That's what's on this week's show. And it's a packed one. So I think what we should do is get right on it. Have we got Melina Mike back yet? Yeah, let's let's chat. Let's do the CLP then. Um, obviously, a very, very controversial. Uh, it was from the start with players pulling out and all stuff like that. But it's all come down now to the positive side. And uh, well, there's, it's lovely, isn't it? Just to see some uh, some proper pole being played, Joey. What do you make of it so far? You know, it's uh, the, I got to admit, the format is very weird for me, Mark. Like, I don't quite totally understand it. But I'm excited for it because it's it's unique. It's something new. It's different. You get to see a lot of pool, a lot of great players playing against, against each other. Uh, I was hiking, you know, the last couple of days up in northern Arizona. I had a great time. And I was still 
popping in on my phone and checking out matches here and there. I saw a little bit of the Suke match this morning, um, the one against Fortunsky. I saw Kelly Fisher, a couple of her matches. I'm so glad to see she's doing well. Okay. Yeah, so it, it's it's been pretty neat to watch and pretty exciting. You know, I know that the shot clock, um, it's just different without a shot clock, right? You have some of the matches that are just taking a little bit longer and players are, you're not used to that uh, from a match yeah, room. You're I'm, used to I'm, hearing I'm the beeps sorry. and seeing them, seeing them play. And so I, I think that would be kind of my constructive feedback. It would be nice if it had the shot clock in this event. I've, um, I've, I've, I've got a thought on that. Now, I think there should be a shot clock because some players are really, really overthinking it, taking it taking too much time and never mind a shot clock i need an alarm clock sometimes for some of the shots that i really have there was four or five minutes for one shot i mean come on you can't have racks of pool taking eight minutes can you it's just a little bit too long in my opinion but on the other hand i hate it when i'm watching the game and all of a sudden out of nowhere comes beep 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 and, oh, what's that and it sort of frightens me so i've come up with a little idea that matchroom might want to employ I don't know if you've been to a McDonald's recently, but you know you get them little buzzer things that you take to your table and it vibrates oh, yeah. when, your meal, when your meal's ready. I think players should have one of them in their pocket so that when the time's coming, it starts to buzz their leg and it gets them to get, get a bit of a move on. Come you on. Know, Mark, maybe that's what happened here. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, a, little, a little buzz in his pocket. I don't know. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, yes. Feder Gorst, he might actually be be um, trialing it. Yeah. I yeah, never thought of that. Let's see if we have Melina Mike in here now. Melina, you here? Yo, I think I finally made it. Had a little bit of some technical difficulties, but we're back on track, hopefully. Awesome. Well, welcome. We just started talking without you about the CLP, and, you know, we're curious to get your thoughts on that. I, You know, we had talked about the shot clock and how I missed the shot clock. You know, um, it, it's just I'm not accustomed to seeing somebody take three laps around a table in a matchroom event. And right. so I, I think I'd like to see the shot clock in this man. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, the one thing that I do enjoy of nine ball pool is, is the short race because it does make it kind of exciting, but it's tough. It's, it's tough on the eyes whenever these guys are getting so much time to go and analyze. And, and I mean, no offense, but some Europeans can just overthink things. And, you know, like you said, take a few laps around the table. It can be, it can be difficult at times for sure. You know, I want to see more pressure on them. That's, that's, that's part of the excitement of, of nine ball pool. I agree. Yeah, I think there's certain times where I saw players really take a lot of time on a particular shot. And I often wonder, would they have shot the same shot with the shot clock that they ended up shooting when they had a minute and a half or two minutes to think about it? So I think Some, that's sometimes, kind of it, sometimes it can work against the player because if they can start second guessing themselves. And you know, in pool, normally your first thought is the one you want to go with normally. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's <clears throat> anytime there, anytime there's too much time for television, it just doesn't work because people are going to go and get turned off really quick. And that's part of the excitement of it all, right? I mean, in, in every matchroom event, you've always seen a shot clock. I don't care whether it's the World Cup of Pool, uh, the World Pool Masters, Moscone Cup, you name it, and that can go and turn the screws on guys and really put some heat on their ass where other, otherwise, you know, they're just there, you know? And, I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong, we love to see how those guys can go and process things, but for the excitement, for the average fan, they're not going to tune in for that, not to go and just watch some guys stand around and, you know, do this number here, you know? Yeah. So I guess uh, day one was really the day of the Chris's, right? You had two extremes, right? Where you had Chris Melling who played well and, you know, he's always such an exciting player to watch anyway, but it was good to see him play well. And you have Chris Robinson who struggled, you know, and really couldn't get things going. Um, but, you know, Chris, I, I mean, Melina, I know you were uh, kind of excited to see Chris Melling do well. Yeah. I mean, he's Chris is coming off of, I mean, everybody had a tough year, right, of, of last year. But, um, you know, I've, I've talked to Chris a couple of times, and uh, I know it's been especially difficult out there in the U.K. Um, he's just coming off the heels of a big English eight ball win, which, you know, for a guy who really doesn't practice a whole lot, to come out and not just do well in English eight ball, which is a whole other discipline, a whole other animal, um, but then follow that up with uh, playing nine ball pool and – Group one was pretty tough. I mean, let's face it, there's a lot of monsters in there. 
Um, and to go out there and win, I couldn't be more happy for the guy. I want to see him snap it off. I mean, I'm I'm fans of a lot of these guys, but yeah, I, yeah, I always enjoy whenever Chris Melling is involved because he he's so creative and dynamic. He's he's a big fan favorite for sure. Yeah, yeah. funny funny you should say that because later on we've got well we've got probably one of the best eight ball racks ever played and it was of course Chris Melling involved in it so we can play it and we'd like to do a little bit of commentary on it us three together really appreciate the magic of the Melling because he really is a genius and he's good in the commentary box as well by the way yeah yeah, I have... week. yeah one thing I was going to say is I've really been enjoying hearing different players in the commentary box well, booth, <laughs> box in the UK, uh, mm -hmm. during this event, right? So I got to listen to Niels uh, in a match today. And just the way he breaks down the rack, I found it very, uh, a, a very informative. And, you know, so you got Carl, of course, who's just so uh, charismatic, wow. and funny, and, you know, he's just great. And then you got Niels, who was very direct and instructional in his commentary. And so I think that's kind of neat, you know? Yeah, we've had Darren Appleton in as well, haven't we, also? And Kelly Fisher was in also. Sorry, go on, uh, no, Mike. As a fan, you want, you want to get into their minds. You want to know what's what's going on, how they go, in, how they go in and dissect that shot and what their approach is. Whereas an amateur may just go and look at that simple shot. There's so many other variables that are going on with these guys. And it's that insight. I mean, you, you got to pay for that, man, you know? to go and, mm -hmm. and, and get those kind of knowledge from from players of that caliber with with their technique their fundamentals uh, what their approach is like but not just when it comes to their fundamentals but how they're going and just picking apart the rack here you know and then going and executing it yeah. what, what 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 do we actually think of the format guys though let me ask you first joey you know what do you think of the actual format and the, and the first group and they get a chance to qualify all week long I think it's pretty interesting. And, you know, all the players are trying to win, obviously. But I think Mike and I were talking before this that you could actually finish in like third place, third place, third place, and then come win at the end and win more money than everybody, you know, and you'd have to be a pretty confident player to try to stall like that to maximize your winnings, because it's races to five and anything can happen. I mean, we saw today, Fortunsky made it out, thought he played really well. The route, the, the match he played against Suke, Suke's up three to nothing, everything. He's on cruise control, and then he makes an error, and Fortunsky wins that game. Then Ralph breaks dry. He run, Fortunsky runs out, then Fortunsky breaks and runs out, and it's three to three in a heartbeat. And Ralph even had a chance on the hill in that game, um, but they're short races. They're not races to nine or 11. And so um, you got to try to win every single one. But I like it. And, you know, people were speculating about Albin today. And there's some video of him like, oh, oh, <laughs> like caption this and him holding his head. And they were speculating, like, was he fatigued? And I brought that up a few days ago. Like, this is a lot of pool that they're playing after coming off a year where they haven't played much pool. And so the ones that advance but don't win their bracket, they're in for another long day the next day. And we might have seen that today with Albin. Yeah, tiredness or not, though, you know, I just think I always thought that Albin Ocean was such a calm guy, but he seems a bit of Jekyll and Hyde, you know, when things start to go wrong for him, he, he really does lose it, you know, and it really surprised me. Albin's one of those guys that can go and, and he, he knows where he's at. He's very aware of the moment and super composed uh, when the cameras are on. But, like, I know I've seen Albin Ocean in tournaments when he's playing on the side table where you can go and see some of those things come out like, like you did today. Um, I think the sport needs more personality. Mm -hmm. Having, having something like a referee go and give them an unsportsmanlike warning or something. And I, I, I didn't tune in a whole lot, but I did see that day one. I'm not a fan of it. I want to see these guys have emotion. We've all been in that, in that moment where we go and get pissed off. Now it's within reason, right? Because we want them to be uh, a good role model for kids and things of that nature. Right. And Albin, he wasn't, overly disrespectful but i want to see them go and get angry and upset it adds to the drama for for me anyway you know i don't want these guys to be so stoic and robotic and and just go in there and just wait i mean that that can be tiresome you know it, it, it can it can play on you yeah, yeah. I agree, Mike. it's like real life right uh we want to yeah. see people live out real life and you know i had suke on my podcast and he says that he thinks it's an advantage that he doesn't show emotion and you know that works for him 
it doesn't work for everybody. <laughs> you know, like some people get upset and they show it. And, you know, that's just life. It's how it is. And we're constantly trying to put pool players in tuxedo vests and everything else. And I think, you know, at some point we just got to let them be who they are. Yeah, I, I agree. I you, need, you need some character. You know, the, the only reason I'm, I bring that up is I'm just saying it's to his detriment, certainly over the last two days that I saw. He looked very frustrated. It gives his opponents um, that added little bit of confidence, you know, like Sukhi was saying, that he never shows emotion because he doesn't want his opponent to know what he's feeling. So I think it can work against you. That's the only thing. Of course, let's have some characters. I miss characters like Alex Higgins. I miss Earl Strickland. I miss lots of different players, Jimmy White and people like that who are a little bit controversial. We love all that. We love, you know, John McEnroe in tennis. We all want that, that, that crazy mind, you know, the genius. Yeah. I know Alvin had made a post uh, today after, after his last match addressing it. And that's the kind of class that you get with Alvin Ocean. Um, he's a world champion in every sense of that word, you know, every sense of that phrase, ra rather. Um, I don't know, man. That stuff, it, it doesn't bother me one bit. I want to I want to see. And this is why I think the fillers and the Shaws of the world and the Billy Thorpes and Sky Woodwards are so popular with fans. It's because they do have heart. They do have that character and that emotion. And that's people can relate to that. People can identify with that. People want to root for that for better or for worse, because if you're American, you're rooting against Josh Filler because of his annex, but if you're European, you're thriving on that. You're, you're, you're cheering him on. You want him to go and, and give him that extra, you know, you know what I'm talking about, Mark. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you 100% on it. Absolutely. I've just felt sorry for, for Albin today because he's a much better player than, than he showed this week, I think. Yeah, and you know, before we move on, let's just highlight what's happening in day three. We have Billy Thorpe and Darren Appleton coming in, right? And they're coming in to face Kelly Fisher uh, Clint Dicacci, uh, yeah. David Alcade, and uh, Albin Ocean. And so, oh, and one more. Who am I missing? No, that's no one more. Fine. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's going to be the seven for tomorrow. Yeah, that's going to be the seven for tomorrow. And you're going to have, like, Ocean, this will be his third day in a row of playing. Same with Kelly Fisher. Um, and I'm excited. You mentioned Billy Thorpe earlier. I'm excited to see the fire he brings to this now coming in. Is it going to take him a little while to get settled, you know, in that environment under the big lights? Or is he just kind of come in and, and just play great? You know, well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, well, I mean, he's already won a tournament with his new Moochie Q, his new sponsor. And the last time he was here, he was playing with a different Q, of course. He's he's up for this. He he's got hey, points. Billy played think. pretty sport in, in in the Midwest playing with that mutual. I'll tell you that. Billy looks sharp. Usually you see guys that go that can go and have. Uh, I think Jason said it, it took him like two years to get his cue back. You know, to the from when he transitioned from Mucci over to Perry. You know, that's how long it took him to get back in that same, you know, champion kind of stroke. And and uh, Billy looks sharp, man. And not only that, but Billy has gone deep in the Texas Open. Joey, you remember that? And uh, that was a nine ball tournament. And I forgot what other nine ball tournament he played recently, but he went he went pretty deep in that as well. So I think Billy will, will surprise some people. I think, I mean, it's it's short race nine ball. He's more than capable. He's been playing, more importantly. Um, and the same with Darren, you know. I, I I think Poole is a lot better when Darren Appleton's playing and is in top form. I, I'm, I'm, I'm beyond happy to see him back in the matchroom stage. Um, he's a multiple time world champion. Uh, Moscone Cup champion many times over, um, and I think he's I think he's coming back with something to prove, and I think both of them are for that matter. So I'm I'm definitely looking forward to it. Absolutely. Yeah, Mark. Before we move on, let's just let the audience know if you're out there, go ahead and share this. Uh, we're gonna have a chance for you later to participate. We're gonna have a little chat pop up in here. Get this out to as many people as you can. We're gonna be doing this on Tuesday nights, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So uh, we want your feedback. So definitely get involved, share this, get it out to as many people as possible. So I reckon it's time for a little bit of venom. What do you reckon? Let's introduce some venom to the show, shall we? Let's do it. I think do I have it. a short little video queued up here. Play the video. The old triple rack jump. Uh, 
That's three points. Field goal. You thought I didn't know what that was. That was a field goal, yes. Look at this one. This one's sick. Hitting moving balls. I can't even hit a, a still ball like that. And look, two at I one. love this one. It's just showing you, off, isn't it? You jump one ball straight out of the rack into the pocket. The other ball you put in outside English on to spin around the table. I don't even know what just happened there. <laughs> I'll leave you. I'll leave you to commentate on that last one. Yeah. Look at I this mean, one. what a talent! I mean, well, we're going to be asking him some questions in a minute. He's just. Yeah. I bet he's never had any problems getting a girlfriend when he was younger. <laughs> Look, boom, 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 machine gun. And then the old slam oh. dunk. Awesome. So here we have with us uh, Florian Kohler, Venom. How's it going, buddy? Hey. I'm doing good. How are you guys? Great. Thanks so much for joining, man. We're really excited to learn more about uh, the stuff you do. It's just remarkable. Remarkable. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, it's a little different, you know. It's not just a normal pool. I'd say it's a little more cra crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You. You How actually. Long did you run shit shots there, Ben. Sorry. Say that again. How long have you been? When? When, when did you start? How old were you? Uh. Well, I started only playing pool when I was 18. I'm 32 right now. But uh, the funny thing is, I I started straight away with trick shots. I never really played normal pool until uh, actually quite later. So, um, you know, I figured I, I didn't know how to play pool, so I learned trick shots. About a year later, I knew all the trick shots they're doing the last 60 years. So uh, then I decided to do my own version of it. And from there, it just uh, it just skyrocketed, I guess. Took off. Yeah, you, you really did change the face of trick shots. I mean, we grew up watching people like Mike Massey and then Dennis Taylor, Snooker, John Virgo. They all done a similar kind of show where they would, it was all about the setup of the balls. But you took it to a whole new level. It's, it's not just setting up the balls for you. You're actually doing stuff. And you described yourself, I think you said, uh, like an extreme trick shot guy. It's sort of like a, a BMXer. I think you used that expression once, right? Yeah, it's, you know, the, the thing with trick shot, it's always been sort of like a side side gate for all those pros, right? So they had their shots and they just had to throw a few shots to entertain the crowd and that was kind of it. It never really gets given the, the true uh, the true time to it, right? And then, like I say, you know, I watch a lot of uh, skateboards and BMX and all those stuff when I was younger. And you could see really in the 90s when they started pushing the extreme, right? And this one guy decides to go do a backflip with it. And you're like, oh, crap, this is insane. And it does, you know, second two backflip. Then, you know, it, now they're probably doing three in a row. And uh, so it's sort of the same evolution for me. I just took, uh, you know, those old shots, realized I knew how to do it. So I got to do something a little better. And I tried one. And, you know, here comes, you know, a moving mass. You know, here comes a double moving mass. And, you know, here comes a triple mass. And, you know, it's just, uh, it just kind of exploded that way. And uh, I think the only limitation at this point is, is, is material, really. Yeah, I've I've described you before as the David Copperfield of the of the trick shot world, you know, and and just watching your clip just then, at the end there's a helicopter in the clip, and I'm just wondering if there's some really really big trick, and I'd love to talk to you talk to you about one that I've had an idea about doing. Now, I've done a little bit of research. Oh, by the way, very very quickly, did you know that the world that the actual world Earth the surface is smoother than a billiard ball. If you folk, if you really, really zoomed in as much as you can and the, the same on a billiard ball, the world is actually smoother. So I'm just wondering, what about, how about a moon, Mars, and Earth, Karen? That would be quite a good show, wouldn't it? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it has crossed my mind to try to do something in a space station, but I think budget-wise, uh, it's not going to work, so... <laughs> <laughs> that uh, the video you're talking about the helicopter though this was uh this was a crazy shoot we uh we were able to move a table uh i think we started in uh in the desert so we had dune buggies around we moved that table in the middle of nowhere in the desert it was absolute pain in the butt then the next day we went to the mayweather boxing club and then the day right after we did uh, um the helicopter and i yeah i just took a i took a massive sunburn that day that was brutal <laughs> Yeah, I've actually worked out, talking of sunburn, Joey's just been hiking, and that's why he's looking a bit like he's just been trapped on a sunbed for three days. But he, he actually um, has been out hiking. Now, just taking that one step further, Florian, uh, now I've done some more research, terminal velocity. 
of a billiard ball, right? 200 miles per hour. Now, Mount Everest, five miles high, roughly, right? I've worked out if you drop, if you went up in that helicopter, dropped the cue, dropped the cue ball off, threw the cue ball off of the top of Mount Everest, jumped in that helicopter, you could get down. There's a table waiting at the bottom where you've set up a two ball combo <laughs> into the corner pockets. And as it comes down, you hold the cue. The cue takes the pace out of the ball, goes onto the table and knocks it. What do you reckon about that one? <laughs> yeah, same thing. You know, I think the, the closest I've been to that was probably trying to throw a cue ball at a building. But, you know, you want to stay realistic? I did I did jump a pool ball from uh, the table I have my computer on into the window right behind me over in my in my swimming pool. So that was, you know, that's the best I, I could do. That. I seen that getting the ball out afterwards with the net. I saw, I actually saw it. Have you got any yes, questions? Yes, ball. I had like a twenty balls in there. <laughs> hey, uh, Florian, I got a cool moment for you that you might appreciate. So, one day I'm up here and and doing some stuff in my studio, and my nine year old comes running up to the studio, and he's like, "Dad, Dad, do you know Venom?" And I'm like, "Venom? What do you mean?" And he's like, "The pool guy, Venom." And I'm thinking, like, cleaning the pools? What's he talking about? And he's like, no, Venom shoots pool. And I was like, oh, yeah, I know Venom. Yeah, he's awesome. And he's like, he's on Dude Perfect. My kids are, like, huge fans of Dude Perfect. It's it's the coolest, like, cleanest YouTube channel you could watch, I think. And we went and watched. I think you had a couple episodes on Dude Perfect. What was it like working with those guys on that show? Yeah, dude, perfect. The, the impact's actually been huge. And I've done lots of TVs, you know, I've been on ESPN, whatever, all kind of other stuff. And uh, to be quite honest, that uh, the dude, perfect uh, was probably the biggest impact I've had on all the, the younger generation, especially. So we did a video, I think, uh, very first one, probably about eight years ago, something like this. And it was a real success, a lot of people. And uh, I think it really helped to uh, get the kids to discover pool again, right? And it was so successful that I think uh, another three years or four years later, we did the version two with when they got way bigger than they were before. Uh, you know, with the huge, uh, huge like office space, whatever it was. And that was just, that went completely nuts. <laughs> I mean, I just say, you know, it just, it just started, you know, it was like, oh, we'll do a few things. You will know, we'll have a smoke machine, do some stuff. And then it went to like, well, here, I'm going to jump a cue ball off the second floor into a you know a golf uh, into a golf hole there that was like I don't know how far that was and that was just uh, that was insane so um, you yeah, know it's, it's a cool thing and it, it's really interesting for me because it gave me like a, like a direction to focus a little bit and you know let's be honest there are uh, there are role models and examples for all the YouTube YouTube uh, network you know what I mean yeah Absolutely. are they as cool in person as they are on YouTube. Well, you know, uh, obviously, you know, there's a little difference. I think at the beginning, you know, it was truly, the, it was truly as cool. Uh, but I think, you know, now that they got so big, it's it's a little different, obviously, and you know, obviously, uh, monetary issues, and you know, it's uh, you could see a little tension here and there. But either way, you know, it was always a good thing for me, and I always had fun doing it. So, uh, to be quite honest, it's always a blast. So hopefully, uh, you get another one in there. But it's always hard to raise the bar again and again and again, right? So. Uh, if we do the version three, you'll have to be completely insane, I guess. Yeah, you've, yeah I know. I read that you've, uh, is it still seven Guinness World Records you hold? I think I'm at eight right now. So I don't I don't know. It keeps moving here back and forth a little bit. Uh, yeah, I have a couple on my tables out there I haven't put yet, and I have you know, I have a bunch somewhere. So, yeah. Really? I actually, I actually hold the record for drinking the most Guinness in 24 hours. That's, that's my only claim to that. <laughs> yeah, you'll probably beat me there. <laughs> um, we have a question from a viewer, if that's okay. Uh, Darren sure. Porter yeah. from Bangkok. A oh, great hotbed of uh, Paul, by the way, Bangkok. Uh, Darren asks, have you got any tips on jumping? Uh, yeah, on jumping. Not one-handed like you do, two-handed like normal people, you know? <laughs> Well, actually, I tell you what, to, to be quite honest, the one hand jump is kind of the, the illustration of how easy it is to actually do a jump shot. So a jump shot is a short, fast poke. It's all this very short acceleration on a very small matter of time, right? And that's why you can do it in all this weird position because it doesn't require a true follow through like any pull shot. It, it's kind of a, I'll say an anti pull shot, right? So short, fast, poke at the ball, quick acceleration, then anybody could do it with just two fingers if you had to. Okay. 
So Not Florian, I have a question. Maybe it's revealing some of your secrets. I don't know, but I'm just so curious with those. And Mike gets uncomfortable every time I say this word, but I, I call it a masse and he's like, no, it's masse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. But uh, with all that English you get on the ball, tell us about your equipment. If you can, are you using an extra soft tip or something that really grips that yeah. cue ball better? Okay, so first off, you got to think a mass AQ is, is shorter and heavier. So it's in between a plank cue and a jump cue as far as lengths. But then the, the, the weight and the weight distribution is completely different. So my mass AQ is about uh, 26 ounces, I think. And the shaft is a mix of Kevlar and carbon. So this is the one I currently have. So it's basically indestructible. Obviously, phenolic ferrule uh, is something really strong there, too. And as far as the tip, it's usually either a super soft Kamui or it's even just an Elkmaster, something really soft. It just get kind of you know squishy. It's got to be spongy. Uh, the last thing you want on a mass A is have a hard tip. If you have any hard tip, you'll just miss cue. And one of the misconceptions is people think you need a jump cue. It helps you have a jump cue to uh, to do a mass A. It's completely opposite actually. Uh, so the fact that it's shorter allows you to just go down more and you know faster than on a long cue. And obviously the weight is going to work with you on the gravity, right? I mean a lot of those shots that you see in the videos, not, not only some of them will take a while. But they're also, you know, you kind of need a mass. Otherwise, if you had a cue, you would, you know, either shatter the cue or uh, simply not have enough power and force in order to make it happen. So, obviously, of course, condition of the table matters a lot. And, uh, you know, I, I will be honest, I'm a, I'm a failed destroyer, class destroyer. So, <laughs> every three months, my table has to be refelted. So, that's wow. just the way it is. Me too, but I'm but I, just because I'm a bad player, not because I'm trying to reach it. I'm just ruining so Mine is legitimately, there's holes everywhere. Like you could actually put it there and it looked like somebody shot a gun to it. So, Wow. wow. Um, I, I don't want to mention the amount, but you've made a nice bit of money and rightly so and deservedly so out of this terrific thing that you do and that you really are a great addition. To a lot the less than people would think. <laughs> like, well, I, I'm, I don't want to say 15 million. I'm not going to say how, how much. There's um, no way. <laughs> <laughs> well, when, when you Google your name, sorry, Mark, yeah. when you Google your name, the first thing that comes up is net worth net right worth. after your name. So yeah, what does he say right now? Worth. 15 million. <laughs> oh, man, I wish. I wish. <laughs> anyway, no, Mike, I, I wanted to ask you, do you ever think that you made them, was it a mistake going from an optometrist to a trick shotologist? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good name, actually. I might use that one. Uh, not quite frankly, uh, you know, I, I did, I did work a little bit at it and, uh, it's a boring job. I mean, as, as much as it's a safe job and, you know, you know, you see better like this or not like this, you see better with it, you know, do this every day. And, uh, you know, I only took me, uh, I think I lasted about a year. And, uh, to be honest, when I was doing it, I was already starting to traveling and then there's nothing quite as exciting. But, uh, the funny thing is, you know, when I moved to the U S it was sort of a gamble. I, you know, I already had my job basically. And I just told my parents I was young, I was like, you know, give me a, give me, let me go and you know, give me a try. If I survive for six months, was are you guys helping me at all? Then, you know, let me do whatever I want. And if I don't, that's no problem. I'll come back and I'll do whatever I studied for anyway. And uh, so I had, uh, you know, I just took a gamble, moved to this, to the U.S. And, uh, you know, I got lucky. It just, uh, I mean, it's, it's a little combination of, you know, a lot of work and, uh, and a little luck, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, then I, I was able to stay here and as much as it wasn't pretty at the beginning, you know, I, I was able to um, sort of grow from there. And I think, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I, I can't complain right now. It's uh, it's amazing. So. so you used to look after people's eyes and like, you know, have you ever, have you injured anyone in any of your trick shots? Oh, my tr well, uh, <laughs> that's funny that you say that. Uh, <laughs> well, I did injure myself. I'll be honest with you quite a few times. I mean, I actually, I'm the only player I know they got blisters. They're actually bleeding. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stupid like that. I'll play until I'm actually bleeding. Uh, obviously, you've seen a few videos when the bloopers and I get hit in the head by a few times when I have like, you know, this. Uh, I did hit a couple models, not too bad. Uh, but I think my wife is definitely took the bulk of it. And uh, the last time wasn't pretty at all. We, uh, I did a shot and the ball just went into the rail. Hit the well, went straight to her eye and she had a black eye for a week. So. That's Whoa. uh that's the extent of it. Now, if you want to sleep on the couch. <laughs> I actually did, surprisingly, but uh, uh it was close. 
Well, I'll say that most of the damage comes to the walls. Like, uh, if you look at my walls on, on that pool room here, it's, uh, it's bad. So, show us. Okay, but, yeah. Well, show I don't know if you could see as well, but let me try. On try. Show us. This is, is a live show. Are... Anything goes. Look at this. Oh. Wow, look at this. <laughs> you really sucked it. Sucked it's it everywhere. In. So, uh, you know, little, little show, us of, famous, uh... show us the famous table, Florian. Table right here. So that's table number one here. There it that's is. the Ross and nine foot victory table. Wow. Uh, this is the foot uh, carob table there, and then I have another nine foot downstairs that I try to keep uh, pretty pretty healthy to actually play normal pool once in a while. That's not a house. That's a pool hole. <laughs> there was the way we uh, we went to get there. Yeah, it took me two years to find a house that was uh, the right floor plan. It's there's no couch here. It's just no TV. Just pool. <laughs> so I got an office, work all day, and then work all night here, and that's it. That's my days. <laughs> well, I don't know if anyone else has got any questions. Are there any questions in the chat for us? Um, can you for see your my, my eyes aren't uh, that good? Yeah, go ahead. I kind of think of you as as the bridge between the pool world and the normal world. You got such a, a massive following. Um, you've obviously been super professional in everything that you do. D does that is that something that you're aware of having that kind of responsibility that to kind of merge the two worlds like that? Yeah, absolutely, and I'm very well aware of it. And uh, I keep, like I say, when I talk to the other pros, you know, uh, we've had a lot of conversation like that. It's like you know, my job is to is to kind of bring the kids, bring the bulk of people, right? And then you guys, you know, like you're talking about uh, Jason Shaw, Darren Appleton, all those guys, you know is to get that people, those people, and try to convert them fully, right? And sort of the same in, in a club level, right? If you look at just, you know, the idea is to bring the kids, and then from there, it's going to be all the all the people, the, the, the good players are going to have to take responsibility and convert them into pool, because I truly think, you know, that the trick shot is entertaining, and uh, but it, it's still a niche sport, right? So we're, we're not going to get, you know, thousands of people playing trick shot. It's just, it's too complicated it takes a lot of things material uh but however you know if you have a kid that just see a video like you said on dude perfect sees the video on dude perfect want to play pool uh there you go you know go to a pool room and then from there you know everybody has to uh take responsibility and uh, all us good players we have to uh to make sure that they do the right thing and learn the right way well you're great as a matter of fact i'm actually uh, i'm actually trying my own uh my starting my own junior program in uh this weekend so We'll see how that goes. Well done. We 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 are we're focusing on um, the youth as well on this. We've got a, a guy coming next week actually who's running a a big youth program. So yeah, very very uh, important that as well. What are those four things behind you, by the way? What are those four certificates? Uh, for? Some Guinness Guinness records there. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just some Guinness World Records. That yeah. I, I've well, I have, I have four no, 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 there, no. and I, have, I think I have another four the other way. That's six the other only way, half. So. That's half my Guinness records. <laughs> <laughs> How strong is that? Yeah, you know, the no. funny thing with those is, is as, as you know, as great as it is to get the first one. The first one is like, a, it's like a dream come true, right? It's like, and you know, I used to read that book. I used to see the show on TV. Like, I am, you know, I'm part of it, right? After that, you know, another one, another one. You're like, oh, that's that's cool, but you know, it's not the same same effect, I suppose. And I, you know, I guess it's the same for those pros when they win tournaments. You know, the very first world championship's got to be, you know, it's got to be something so special. And I'm sure if you win it like a Ralph Suke, you know, then you know, it's just another one, right? Yeah, absolutely right. I, I've actually worked out what I'm going to buy you for your Christmas present, Florian, this year. It's going to be wine glasses. Because I do you ever smash, do you lose it? Do you smash any wine glasses ever, or, or do you? Yeah, we uh, we've we've smashed a few. To uh, we'll say those those didn't last too long. Uh, I've been trying to stay stay out of them because you know every time we break them, even you vacuum whatever, you cannot get the glass out of the plain surface. It's a pain in the butt, and then you get you get your hand there, and you got a cut on your finger. Like oh, so stupid. So there you go. You know, we stayed trying to get all the pieces, but. Uh, we usually reserve that to the videos and the, the very last shot of the day so we can just take the class and just fold it and put it in trash. We, we we actually spoke to one of your neighbors and they said it sounds like you're holding great weddings there every single week. There's so much <laughs> smashing the class. <laughs> uh, hey, I have one last question for you, Florian. When you come mm -hmm. up with an idea for a trick shot, um, you know, being being a content creator myself, I think about an idea that I have for a video. And that whole process takes a while. 
Um, I'm just curious when you come up with the idea for the shot, how long does that process take for like diagramming out the shot or experimenting with the shot till you get a finished product? That's a great question. Uh, quite frankly, there's no universal answer for it. Some sometimes weirdly, you know, you got a you got an idea, you go on the table and you kind of make it and it kind of works, and that's that's it. You know, five minutes. Then sometimes I uh, I got I got a shot, I got an idea, doesn't work physically, doesn't work. So then you switch it, move the ball by a corner or whatever it is, and then it works. So that's number two. Option three is usually I, I do carry with me uh, sort of like a book. And I've been carrying it for the last 15 years, I think, with me when I, I have an idea and I'll diagram it, right? And then it kind of stays there. And whenever I get practice time, I'll go and, and, and look at it uh, and, and try to do it. And from there, you know, it evolves. And from there, sometimes one of the diagram evolves in like 10 different ones and it's split, right? So it, it's, a very, it's a very interesting process and there's no real answer to it. But I, I like to say the pool table to me is more like a, like a blank piece of paper and I got to draw something on it. So to me, it's more of an art than, than support a pool. And, and to be honest with you, and I, I have a lot of respect for all those top guys because what they're doing really is, is, is insane and it's so difficult, right? Me, I'm more of an artist. I, I come up and do, I do my thing and, you know, um, I do it. I, I have fun with it. And I think that that's the best, that's the best way to do it. So, but, you know, sometimes I, I have on the, on the, on the go and I like, and sometimes once in a row, I got nothing new, so. Yeah. Let's just bring a quick question in from a viewer and then we'll let mm -hmm. you go, Florian. Um, John Burrell wants to know, have you got any um, ambitions to play with fire in any of your trick shots to come in the future? You know, I, I, I've had that question a lot. Uh, quite frankly, I'm not risking that in my house. Uh, <laughs> so and I'm, I would tend to say that uh, if it if it fell takes on fire, I'm pretty sure we're, we're in trouble. But I uh, know it's uh, it's one of the things that's uh, supposed to come. So who knows? Maybe uh, maybe one day if we can get a magician or somebody that knows what they're doing. Uh, I see another question to this actually interesting. It's a stop three injury due to practice. Uh, I'm the only guy that I know of to actually broke a wrist playing pool. So I, wow. uh, I've been looking, but I'm sure, I think I'm the only one. So I actually dislocated my wrist uh, doing too much massive because I used to do it, what we say, the um, European grip, right, this way. And just one day, I think I was doing a show in Atlantic City, and uh, I just felt it, right? And just like sharp pain, it was there. I'm like, man, what is this? And then, you know, next thing I know, I had to go back home and uh, yeah, three bones dislocated in the wrists. And uh, since then, I had to play like this now, American grip, so. It's called dedication. Well, pretty intense. Yeah. You know, we're so grateful for you to come on. Um, obviously, we've got lots more to get through as well. But uh, if you want to go, you're welcome to go. You can stay if you want as well. It's entirely up to you. I'm sure we'll get some more questions for you. But thank you so much for joining us, Florian. It, it really uh, has been. Yeah, I think I'll let you guys at it. Thanks. Thank you guys for uh, bringing me in. I know you guys have a lot of uh, stuff to talk about. I know the Champions Pool League are going on, right? So, yeah. Who, who do you think? Well, just one more question. Well, when you do play pool, what's your favorite game, Florian? Is another question I saw pop up. Hmm. Uh, well, my favorite, probably uh, straight pool, actually, even though I'm not that great at it. I only have a high run of like 73 balls, but I, I do love to play straight pool by myself. Uh, it's one of the cool things. But other than that, I really like every every kind of game of pool. It's just, uh, I mean, eight ball, nine ball. I'll play, play whatever it is. I, I have, a, you know, a deep, true love for the game and any kind of it. So as long as I have a table and I'm, I'm a happy camper. so. I can see it now. Florian's got like three stop shots to get out, and instead he goes eight rails for position just because it's fun. <laughs> that's why you only get Sadly, <laughs> it's a bit of a problem for me. Yeah, it, it is a bit of a problem. And I think that's why I'm, I'm taking a liking to uh, to three cushion because I'm able to kind of put it all together, right? So you got the aiming from pool, you got the, the right, you know, the right way trying to run points, but you also got to get crazy at some points and unleash your stroke. So uh, that's why I think I've been, uh, I've really been taking a liking to the game. and. Hopefully in the future, try to play some more tournaments in that. Awesome. Well, thank Brilliant. You. Thank you so much for joining us. For you guys. Well, look, what else can we say? Venom, the trick shot genius, the, the, the most famous. Actually, was it, you've got over a million subscribers, more than a billion, more than a billion views of your videos. Yeah, I think uh, 1.4 million followers on Facebook, a million on YouTube, and uh, yeah, a billion, couple of billion views almost, no, probably now, so. Yeah, Florian, I was showing your Instagram um, 
but go ahead and uh, let people know how they can find you if they haven't. Uh, at Venom Trick Shots uh, on Instagram, I believe. At Venom Trick Shots official on Facebook and uh, YouTube, uh, just slash Venom Trick Shots. So pretty easy. Awesome. Thanks a lot, man. My Thanks, pleasure, guys. Okay. Au revoir. Keep up the Cheers. great work. Wow. wow. That was pretty cool. What, what a man. Cool. Yep. Yep. There is there is a passionate guy about oh I didn't realize he was so actually passionate about the game. Uh, did you, Mike? No, no clue. But I'd love to go and see him get in a big tournament. How about the US Open? Let's yeah. see how he does on the on the TV table. Uh, he he's he's already good with pressure. And so I think he'd fair I think Look, he'd I'm fair pretty well. You. I'm telling you, I get this same thing sometimes where I roll up on a shot. I know the right <laughs> shot, and I'm like, hey, this would be interesting to try it like this. And for him, it's even harder. You know, he's going to roll up on something that's super easy, and he's going to see a mass A, Mike. And he's going yeah, to hit a mass A when he could just hit a straight and stop shot, you know. Uh, I know that that has to happen when he tries to compete in, in regular pool, you know. So Yeah, he wants to go four rails every time. No matter what shot it is. <laughs> so we were going to um, do some fun facts for you next. We do, have you got more fun facts there? Yeah, I got a little fun facts over here. Would you like to start or do you want me to start? Yeah, let's start here. In 1765 AD, the first billiard room was built in England. Played there was one pocket, but it was a table with only one pocket and four balls. So a little bit different than the one pocket we know of today, huh? I included that for Melina Mike. I saw it and I thought Melina Mike will love that. You just got to say one pocket and he's beaming oh. over. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, actually, you talk about pool room. The term pool room now means a place, of course, where billiards are played. But in the 19th century, a pool room was a betting parlor for horses. There you go. So, and they just had a pool table in there. And then actually they turned turned more into pool type pool rooms, and now they're called pool rooms. There you go, Melina Mike. There's another one for you. It's like the Melina Mike. Keep me, yeah, keep pool. Melina Mike happy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, what's, uh, this one? what's this one here, Mark? Uh, Captain Mingaud, the inventor of the leather Q-tip, was in prison for political reasons during the French Revolution. With the help of a fellow prisoner, he was able to have a billiard table installed in his cell. It was during his incarceration that he became obsessed with the game that he devised and perfected his invention. His obsession became so intense that at the end of his prison term, he actually asked for a longer sentence so that he could complete his study of the game. <laughs> that's, that's loving it, right? When you ask to stay in prison longer so you can perfect your game. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's like being in prison now, isn't it, with the COVID? But unfortunately, we haven't all got pool tables. Yeah. <laughs> um, would you like to do, should we have a bit of melling magic? Are we ready for that or not? Are you yeah, ready let's for do a bit it. Of melling magic? Let's do it. Fire Here it comes. So, this, I know it's a very, very famous video, and he's playing against Mika Imminent here. And this run out is, well, it's described as the best one ever. And, Tell us what you think, guys. Well, first of all, this opener is just nuts. And even Johnny Archer was commentating this match. He had no idea what he was doing. It was actually, I wish we would have left his commentary in here because it was hilarious. Johnny's like, what's he, what, what's he doing? And he cuts this ball into the stripe, maneuvers it closer to the pocket, and brings the cue ball back over in a timing fashion to hit the stripe into the solid. Nuts. To even think of that, right? I mean, how do you? It's like a venom shot, isn't it? How do you think of it? Now, look, he's thinking, oh, I'm so unlucky. I want now, to now not more to right. what, I want to what do you got, Melina? I want him to go and play more after that, after seeing that shot. He needs to play more right. one hole. Except, You're right. Except shoot at your hole. Yeah. Don't do what he did at Derby. <laughs> what, did he shoot at the wrong hole? <laughs> yeah, he did. On, on, oh, on the mean, TV table, dude. I mean, Venom would be pleased with this one, wouldn't he? What a massive this is. It's nuts. It's a perfect. He gets right back in line, and then he manages to get out of line again soon. <laughs> yeah, the neck, I think it's the next time he gets out of line is the mental shot, isn't it? Yeah, watch. I think the best part of this whole video is that it's against Mika and how Mika just melts down every time someone makes an unbelievable shot. 
it's, it's surprising how many times he goes to get out of his chair thinking, oh, he's, he can't be putting one here, surely. So look here, the easiest shot he has, he brushes the seven and leaves himself dead straight in on the seven. It's like the one thing he couldn't do there, right? Yeah. This is and what you didn't see, what was clipped out of the video, is that he walked around the table, table several times and he spotted this four railer, which I don't even think I would have even considered. This is unreal, <laughs> this four ball, isn't it? Yeah. And Archer at this point is saying, he's going to play this four rail between all those balls. Our Johnny had no clue what he was doing. Yeah. I mean, look, how insane yeah. is that? Absolutely oh, brilliant. And then, I'd love it if you'd have missed the black. Wouldn't that have been funny? Yeah. <laughs> so I let this run for a second. clap in the background there. Yeah. Mm. Well, I, I let this run for a second here because as these balls are being racked, uh, to your point, Melina, yes, we've all seen Mika act a certain way at the table, but watch this. <laughs> Melling didn't even know what to say, and that's, that's kind of a good bit of camaraderie there. And then they're talking about how he did it. <laughs> he thinks he brought his own that tube. Day the for Melling. Well, that's Melling unreal. Unreal. Oh. Jeez. Hey, guys, for those of you that are watching, do, do us a favor. Go ahead and share this. We should have many more people on here. Uh, get this out. Uh, all the pool groups that you know, all the friends that you have, get it out here. This is going to be a regular Tuesday night thing. We're going to be out here kind of giving you guys some great content live. Anything can happen. We just saw Florian's wall at his house that he bashed with a cue ball a hundred times. <laughs> you never know what you're going to see. So do us a favor and share it out there. What do we got next, Mark? What's up? Well, I'd like to have a chat with uh, the guys from Piazza's Sports Bar if they're going to be ready very soon very soon are they around yeah. yet or not I, I think they are let's see if they're in there there yeah, like tony piazza hey tony hey guys he's going with the food theme <laughs> what's up tony you hear us okay how you guys doing oh we're good hear you a little bit yeah we yeah. just had a guy, we just had a guy on actually venom who um could have sorted your eyes out for you he used to be an optometrist he could have <laughs> looked at your eyes for that's you that's what i heard he, that's what he did before he was a trick shot artist <laughs> yeah that's right so go ahead joey yeah tony i've known you for a while man and i'm just so happy that you got your place now you and patrick roy there in aurora colorado and i was fortunate to come up there i guess about a month ago now and commentate some matches and you know it's just a beautiful place tell folks about it tell tell them what they're gonna have in store for them when they come to piazzas well uh first of all when they come here they got uh, a couple options they got uh, a back room it's like a like a little tournament room or a, a league room and then they got the open room out here but the food uh i've been watching mark's post and this guy is making some pizzas that look food. delicious that I, I gotta come out to the uk Get and try out but our food our food's <laughs> off the off the chart we're getting a lot of rave reviews for our uh, for all the pasta dishes and the pizza and um in the room um the room we got we got 12 bar tables and we got two big tables and the two big tables um constantly are a lot of action on the big tables from 20 dollars sets to we were playing thousand dollar sets last week there was a couple big games going on in here we got a couple guys playing right now in the room that uh play real good we got a local adam king you know adam and he's playing uh, tyler blowers uh from wyoming they're gambling a little bit right now um but leagues a lot of leagues in here leagues show up every night so they pack, they pack our room up um uh we got tournaments every saturday um scotch doubles is big in denver right now they're like the scotch doubles with a like a handy like a fargo cap rating though that's like big right now like we're getting uh 16 teams to 32 teams every saturday and then other pool rooms are starting to do that um which is cool i'm more of a you know straight up partners kind of play for some matching up kind of guy but yeah you've been they, known to gamble a little bit in your day haven't you tony uh, a little bit I, I mean it's you know it's, it's how you get your competition on so get bad. your picks he just, he raved about how great of a one pocket player you were he just he threw he just killed your action killed your action joey that's what i, <laughs> uh, Sorry, I heard dude. a little bit of it that's all right <laughs> no no yeah so tony uh I, Tell us again how many how many uh, bar boxes and how many big tables? Two big tables and how many bar boxes? Can you hear me? Uh oh, he's done something to his phone. He's touched something. He's touched something. <laughs> he's, he's muted himself. 
Did you mute yourself, Tony? I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You can't hear us. Okay. If you ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you touch it, Tony? <laughs> Why did you do that? <laughs> wow. wow. Hey, wow. while he's struggling to get that back online, I got to tell you guys, I was there. And the recipes, I think, all come from Tony's family. And Italian food, great food. The pizza was great. I'm actually doing keto. I just stripped the cheese and the pepperoni off of it and eat that. But it was delicious. Uh, all the dishes there were good. Yeah. So you had bread. You had bread, basically. Yeah. Hey, Tony, can you drop off? Here, let's see if I can chat him up. You guys, hold on. <clears throat> if he can come back. He was ready to get back to the action. Yeah, we were we were going well there, and he touched something. I don't know what he did there. Yeah, he, he went and touched <laughs> something, and now he's gone completely. Maybe yeah. he'll come back. Well, why don't we why don't we quickly flip if we can to earlier on this week or over the weekend? You may have seen me. I think Melina Mike was involved in it as well. Actually, uh, he was he put a picture up of Fedor Gorse with his hand down his trousers. <laughs> and, um, oh, I asked. Oh, I asked. <laughs> Yes, you did. I saw you arguing. Fedor wasn't very pleased. So I sort of took some of the heat off of you. And hey, ran hey, yeah. I think we got Tony back. I can oh, hear you guys now. Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Sorry about that. I get a phone yeah. call. Yeah. Of course. So last oh, you time a phone call. Uh, Joey was down here, you remember what happened? We go, we try to get the, the wireless going, and I turned the whole show off or something for like an hour and a half. It was <laughs> yeah. technical difficulties. So, Tony, you guys upgraded your internet in the middle of the tournament, which was great once we got it upgraded, but that's what happened, and it killed it. Um, but I've noticed that you guys are doing streaming there now. So what's the deal? Like somebody matches up in there, and they can just have their match streamed? Is that what you guys are doing? So we haven't really got it dialed in yet, but that was the plan. Like Friday night fights, have an undercard. on the, We got a stream table on the bar table, and we got one on the big table. Um, nice. And then test driving our commentators here. We got to like uh, we got a four or five people that like to commentate, so we're kind of just test driving it. We haven't got it uh, officially dialed in yet, though. But the two our two chefs or cooks happen to be, uh, you know, total tech guys. So they were able to set up. We went to the store. We we all went shopping together on their day off. Went and bought a couple computers, bought some microphones. They set it up, and it's awesome. I mean, I get a roll there too, like. Got a guy cooking and running your stream for you, so that's pretty cool. Well, Tony, I, can, I just sorry, Mark. no, I was going to say I can come and cook some pizzas and do some commentating with you, and that Joey would be come awesome. along as well. What about that? Hell yeah, let's <laughs> go, Mark. Come on, yeah, anytime. As soon as this, as soon as this lockdown is over, I'm there. Trust me, All believe right. me, I'm going to be there. Hey, Tony, I, I call Molina Mike the pool insider because he he knows it all about pool, and I have him actively working in his area his neck of the woods to find you a big one pocket match okay we're gonna get something going on between you and somebody that melina mike's gonna set up okay we're gonna not set up mike but, try to make it as okay. even of a game as possible even i always find <laughs> myself in, in bad games for some reason <laughs> or tough two tough games i don't know but it, that sounds fun come actually. on over to texas we'll treat you what well. part of texas <laughs> mike yeah uh I'm I'm a, I'm a, right now I'm actually at James Hanshu's place. About a, uh, so, uh, but I'm a little bit further south, right by the beach. So, okay. Yeah, but he knows all everybody in Texas. Colorado. Yeah, Mike knows everybody in Texas. I think he mentioned some name the other day to play you, Chohan or something. I don't know if you've heard of him. I'm trying to look that <laughs> as up. my with my playing partners, I'll take that guy as my partner. <laughs> <laughs> so will I, and I can't play. <laughs> well, hey Tony, we really appreciate you coming on. We're gonna try to feature a room uh, each week and talk about a different place. So as people kind of start traveling again throughout the country and they they get to Denver or Aurora, Colorado, they can pop into your place and check it out. Uh, the thing I was most impressed with when I was out there is just the way you interacted with your customers. It was a place where I felt like you know I really wanted to be. You know, awesome. I think that, thank that, you, Joey. Yeah, it's yeah. how you interact. You see APA threes and fours, they'd be like, Tony, come over here and play a game. And you'd be like, okay, 
go over there and start playing with somebody. And it was just cool to see knowing the player of your caliber, you know, is interacting with everybody like that. So thanks. Thanks so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate it, Joey. Mark, Mike, peace. Cheers, mate. We appreciate All right, guys. it. Man. We'll talk soon. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Love you, mate. Cheers. Did we manage to get Jason Shearman? Did he get home or not on time? You know, so we were going to have, thanks for bringing that up, Mark. We were going to have Jason Shearman on. He was actually in here. Uh, but the problem is that Jason just won the U.S. Amateur Championship uh, down in Florida. And it's a miraculous story. I want to hear him you know, give it to us. So I'm not going to tell you too much about what happened because it's just nuts. Um, but he's been on like a whirlwind since then. And he's just completely exhausted. And he said, you know what, this is getting really late on the East coast. I'll come in next week. So he's going to come with us and, and be with us next week. And we're going to get a chance to chat with him. So. Great. Brilliant. Yeah. I want to talk to him about that amazing final. So we won't say too much about it. I'm sure lots of you saw it. Uh, can we go to the caption? competition very very quickly <laughs> there, it <is. laughs> there it is and we had uh, lots of suggestions they didn't like mine for some reason i didn't win it i thought i fed all was saying extension please but you know uh, that didn't win it we had we had lots of uh, we had lots of them from janine johnson who said hey josh if you do this before shaking hands it really does put them off that we like that one that made it to the final um uh, Amanda Guest said, I picked this one. Um, just setting up a tricky cannon. Mike Holmes said, hey, Josh, I've got ball in hand. And Mr. Hoffman, carom this one, baby. Very sexy, isn't it? And uh, Corby Dayhoff, well, we chose this as the winner, didn't we, guys? We all agreed on this one. And uh, he has fed a gorse saying, I heard the ref say foul. So I took ball in hand. We yep. love that one. We absolutely love that one. And uh, we're going to get a prize to you. I don't know what it is. I think Joey said it's going to be a brunk, a break jump cue with everything on it or something. <laughs> this is after, this is after you tell me, Mark, that if the winner's in North America, I'm the one shipping the prize. <laughs> if you're going to hold me to that, then when somebody wins in the UK, trust me, they're getting a diamond pool table. <laughs> Give them some chalk or something to put on the tip of the um, the break jump cue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you believe it, guys? We're out of time again. Let's do – we forgot to do one very, very important thing, hasn't, haven't we? The lock picker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's get that up here. Okay, so – Yeah, so I want to talk a second about this, guys. We have a sponsor for the show, and it's the YouTube channel Board Lock Picker. Do me a favor. This guy loves pool. I met him when I lived in Florida, and he used to attend the pool tournaments there, but he also sponsors pool events, and he's been on some of Roy's streams. He's sponsoring this show, uh, Board Lock Picker. All he's asking in exchange for sponsoring is for people to subscribe to his channel. It's free. It costs you nothing. If you've already subscribed to Pool Player Podcast or you know one of the other pool channels out there, Florian's channel, go to Board Lock Picker and subscribe to this guy's channel. He's a big fan of pool and a big fan of supporting pool. And he might save you hundreds of dollars if you ever get locked out of your vehicle, your house, something like that. I was watching one today where he picked the ignition to a Honda Accord. <laughs> so he's got all kinds of stuff up there. So what we're going to do is have a segment each week called the Board Lock Picker Lock of the Week, where each of us are going to pick a lock for the week, something that we know is going to come true. So what do you guys got? Mike, you got any? You got any locks this week? Well, here's my idea. So I know you guys only wanted to do it on Tuesday, but check it out. I'm going to Dallas. I'm going to be up there where Tony and Chip are going to be playing. How about we do this? How about we come back again on Friday, and we'll give you the uh, the pick of the week right there for the Tony and Chip match. And then we'll also follow up with the Fedor and, and Bergman match. How about that, guys? Okay, so you're going to hold off on your pick until then? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay, I got a lock that I got to share. I don't know. Got that. And also, can I meet him at the <laughs> bank, please? In uh, I, I need to get into the bank. I forgot my keys and I work there and I've just left some paperwork there and I just need to get in. So, board lock picker, if you're well, bored, please come and give me a call. I need you. Well, he's a great guy. His name's Joey. So, you know, he's got to be cool. Uh, but board lock picker, check it out on YouTube. And here's my lock of the week that I'll give you now. And I'll just give you another one when we come on later in the week. So, my lock of the week 
you know, when you look at the odds that came out, Mike, you posted something with the odds for CLP. And I kept seeing Kelly Fisher down by the bottom. I saw 30 something to one. All that. She's going to be in the finals. She's going to be in the finals. That is my lock of the CLP. She will make it to the finals. Book it. It's getting tougher. <laughs> it sure is. We'll well, you got we'll you see. got Billy and Darren coming in tomorrow, but yeah. I still think she's getting a lot of table time, and she was one that was playing those ghost tournaments, uh, you know, those virtual tournaments, and I I really feel like she's got a little bit of an advantage from that, and she's not intimidated by the guys one bit. So I see Kelly making it, was it through to that. Final today, so anything can happen. She's more than capable. I hope she does go and make it. She does it. Yeah, and, and just, just to go to the technical side of it, just for a second, because you know I love to talk technical stuff with Paul. And she's got, and Carl Boys has been mentioning it as well in commentary, that she's got this snooker background. She's got this really um, tight cue action, that very short cue action. And in the conditions on this new table, where it's very, very hard to control the cue ball, she's doing better on this than a lot of other players might do. They've struggled on the table. I know it's going to get easier as the, as the week goes on, of course, as the cloth wears in and the cushions start to uh, react as they should do, less sliding and stuff like that. But I think this is great for Kelly Fisher. And don't forget, we've still got Yasmin Ocean and Christina Catch to come into the fray as well. So there's a lot of pull to be played in this tournament. It is exciting. It is a different format. And I just wish, my final thought on it, I really hope in the next final, when the, when they go to the, the actual knockout stage of the competition, when the groups are finished, please bring in the shot clock because I think it needs it and it's going to keep more people interested in the game because the games are going on too long. Just my opinion. Yeah. I agree, Mark. I think we need the shot clock. We talked about that in the beginning. And we talked about it at the end, yeah. so hopefully they hear us. A good way to end. And we will be back next week with the APA champion. Melina Mike is going to be, I don't know where he's going to be, but I don't know, Mars or somewhere. You're going to be, you're going to be next week, Mike. I'll be back home, God willing. So we'll see how it goes. I'm going up to Dallas to go with the uh, Tony and Chip matchup. I'm really looking forward to it. But I'm, I'm excited to go and have Sherman come on. I, I don't want to. I don't want to give away too much, but man, I heard he had a pretty good comeback there in the final. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it for sure. Thanks again, Mike, for joining us. You are going to be a regular feature. How can we do this show without you? You are one of the brothers. We are now triplets. We are triplets from another mother. Uh, Joey, always a pleasure. Thank you so much with all the technical wizardry and all your hard work. I know you've had a super busy week hiking and doing all the lovely stuff, family stuff, learning all this new um, technical equipment. Thank you so, so much. And most of all, thank you uh, to Florian uh, Venom. Thank you so much also to Tony joining us, Tony Piazza from Piazza Sports Hall, Sports Club. And also um, thank you mainly to you viewers for tuning in. Please, please like and share it. Spread it around the world. If you want to get involved in the show, you're more than welcome. Oh, one final thing. Florian has agreed to do the 10 ball challenge to clear the table the quickest possible. He didn't have time to do it today, but he will do it as will Chris Robinson. Okay. So we'll have that coming. We, we're not going to tell you who the pro is next week, mainly because we don't know ourselves. Um, it's all on the fly. This show is good fun, right? Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Say goodbye guys. Hey, see you guys. Cheers.